Joining me now to talk more about this on set is Eugene Daniels, the White House correspondent for Politico and an NBC News political analyst, former Maryland Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards, and Danielle Pletka, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Danny, I want to start with you. Liz Cheney sounding the alarm here. She's not mincing words at all. Uh, it, it seems as though the only people in the Republican Party sounding the alarm at this level are those who have already fallen out of favor with Donald Trump and rank and file Republicans that don't have a, a, a ton of influence here, namely not the other people running against Donald Trump. How, how do you view what Liz Cheney has to say and does it resonate at all in this campaign? So I think that the problem for Liz Cheney is she's not sounding the alarm for the first time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she sounded the alarm when she was a senior member uh, of the leadership in the House. For a lot of people, her willingness to join the January 6th committee when other Republicans were not allowed to, uh, by choice of the then speaker, discredited her um, because they felt that she was uh, a willing and again, I'm not saying I feel this way, this is how people view her, as that she was a fig leaf for the Democratic Party. And that's part of the challenge here, is that these really strident warnings about, you know, Trump as Hitler, Trump as Mussolini, um, I think don't, A, don't really go to his weaknesses, um, which are that he will be a terrible president, mm -hmm. that he is unhinged from reality. Uh, I think these sort of apocalyptic warnings aren't, that helpful. Mm -hmm. To be clear, she, there were Republicans that were allowed to be on the committee. The, how, uh, the ones Kevin that McCarthy, were so, Kevin the, McCarthy pulled the the, the speaker. Off. There, there the were speak ones that were right. Yeah, there were there were ones that were pulled off by the speaker who were targets of the investigation. But it's not as though Republicans weren't allowed to be on the committee. Tradition suggests that the yeah. leader of the party gets right. to choose the member, not the leader of yeah. the other but it party. Just, I was just clarifying that point. It wasn't mm, yes, but that's not how it works on yeah, Capitol yeah, Hill. Right. Yes, yeah. so, Eugene. To this point, though, about how there aren't a lot of Republicans being willing to challenge Donald Trump, especially as he seems to grow even more powerful in this Republican primary. Listen to how Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who is allegedly one of his top opponents, uh, responded to the vermin remarks on Meet the Press yesterday. Take a listen. Do you condemn the use of the word vermin, I then? I, I, I don't use the term... But what I don't do is play the media's game where I'm asked to referee other people. He's responsible for his words. He's responsible for his conduct. I'm responsible for mine. But I will tell you, more important than the choice of words is, why are you running? If he's running for personal retribution, that is not going to lead to what we need as a country. you got to be running for the American people and their issues, not about your own personal issues. How do you think, what do you think of that response? I mean, part of running against someone is being the referee at times, right? You do have to respond <laughs> because what you're trying to do is separate yourself from them, right? Why should you vote for me instead of this other person? Mm -hmm. And you've seen Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, um, kind of at times struggle to do that at times, right? Nikki Haley, I think, has gone much further than Ron DeSantis has. Um, but there has been a sense from the Republican side in this primary that they were hoping and praying that the legal issues that he was into would disqualify him in people's eyes. We saw that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. Then there was a hope that maybe these legal issues, maybe the court dates would happen early and then he'd be convicted and thrown in mm -hmm. jail before people really started voting. That is obviously not going to be the case. By the end of March, he, we will have 70% of folks of the delegates awarded on the Republican side. So at mm -hmm. that time, it's, an, it, it's probably a done deal. And he may have one of those cases, those um, criminal cases, um, getting on, getting right. on its way. And so it's almost too late at this time for them to even sound these alarms because they should have been doing it a long time ago. And I think you're right. Like, not many Republicans are looking to Liz Cheney, especially the base <laughs> Republicans, um, to ask what she thinks about this. People know what she thinks about right. this. That doesn't mean it's not important for her to be speaking out, but she's not going to move votes. She's right? already it's, been defined. Exactly. She's yeah. been defined and she's already tried to define Donald Trump in her right. own way for years. So, Donna, to Eugene's point that it seems like everything that gets thrown at Trump, he gets a little stronger. I want to play some sound from a rally over the weekend in Iowa from the former president. Take a listen. Joe Biden is not the defender of American democracy. Joe Biden is the destroyer of American democracy. So if Joe Biden wants to make this race a question of which candidate will defend our democracy and protect our freedoms, and I say to Crooked Joe, and he's crooked, the most corrupt president we've ever had, we will win that fight, and we're going to win it very big, very big. 
So this is a tactic of Donald Trump, right? Take something that he's being attacked with and then turn it back on his opponent. Is it effective? Well, I think with his base, it is effective. And that's the reason that he does it, because he needs to shore up that base. And, you know, every time I watch and listen to Donald Trump, I feel like I need a degree in psychotherapy because it really is that, you know, kind of reverse reversal that he's trying to do. And the other thing that I would add to what G Eugene said is that the other thing that the other candidates counted on is that they would be able to siphon off a little bit of Trump's base. And what Trump has done with these comments and others is to shore it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you you know, wanna... I, uh, we've watched all these clips and, and I think largely agree about all of the reactions to it. What I ask myself as a Republican is, you mentioned Nikki Haley's kind of gone hammer and tongs mm -hmm, after mm -hmm. Trump. DeSantis has finally started. What if they had been doing this since the beginning? Right, right, right? Yeah, what yeah. if they all hadn't been so afraid of him and his base? Would this be a different race? Well, more importantly, when he started to be indicted, what if they hadn't supported him? What if mm -hmm. they hadn't said, this is just the deep state coming to get Donald Trump? That would have changed it because, you know, people talk about being scared of the base. That's absolutely true. But that's what being a leader is, right? You're, you're supposed to lead the party into a certain place. And if that's what you're trying to ostensibly be, then you have to do, you have to do that at certain times. And they, they just haven't. Well, in the first debate, virtually every Every hand went mm -hmm. up when asked whether they would support <laughs> that was the Donald test. Trump as a You're nominee. Right. Yeah. And that was the end of the game for if them. If he was convicted. If he was right. convicted. Right. But right. that was Even the that. end of the yeah. game for them because once they gave that up, then nothing else that he says or does during the course of this campaign uh, can take them off of that raised hand. Yeah. So let's talk about Doug Burgum then. <laughs> Speaking of, okay. First of all, does anyone at the table know who he is? He's the he's the governor of uh, North Dakota. Uh, he announced that he's not running for president anymore. If you weren't sure that he was running for president, uh, but the reason I want to bring him up, uh, jokes aside, is that the the field is getting smaller, and we have started to see some level of coalescence around at least DeSantis and Haley with some others kind of hanging in the fringes. Uh, is there any opportunity here for the field to coalesce outside of the Trump window to have some sort of meaningful effect on Iowa? I'm not saying they could beat him in Iowa, but show some degree of momentum leading into Iowa and beyond. Yeah, it's possible. Anything's possible, right? Iowa, sometimes you see things change very quickly in Iowa, but a lot of people that win Iowa don't go on to be right. president, right? Mm -hmm. You could ask President Ted Cruz mm -hmm. in 2016. That did not, that's Rick not Santorum. how it worked with Santorum. <laughs> yeah. Lots of folks, mm -hmm. and that hasn't happened for them. What I will say is both of these, it for Nikki Haley or um, Ron DeSantis to really move ahead and, and try to overtake Donald Trump, one of them has to get out. It can't be Doug Burgum. Right. It can't be, you know, Chris Christie, who has not. Um, it can't be uh, Mike Pence. It can't be Tim Asa Scott. Hutchinson, who's also still running. <laughs> it yeah. has to be someone with yeah. some numbers, right. right? It can't be a one, two, five percent person. Neither one of them, I talk to these campaigns a lot for Playbook, neither one of these campaigns sees themselves as going anywhere but right. forward. And when you have that and not really kind of caring about taking him out and, and everyone right. get behind someone, that's not going to happen. Yeah, well, to uh, Eugene's point, um, you know, if you look at all of the yeah. ones who dropped out, they all are around the same number of <laughs> one, two, three right. percent. That is not going to add right. up to a and, win. And there's also the possibility they get out and endorse Donald Trump. Exactly. Which is exactly. Exactly. That's at the heart of the problem, <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah. it? That no one wants to do what's good for the country. Right. Everybody wants to do what's good for them. Yeah, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you guys all for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.